We are somewhere cool this morning, but before I tell you where that is, uh, talk about that bike ride we just saw. That was at... That was at the Hickory Run State Park. We spent one night in the campground there. Lots of hiking, and uh, I went for a bike ride in the morning, and I saw a sign that said Boulder Field. So it's a kind of a long gravel steep road to get out to it. Um, and it was pretty cool. It was, it's uh, like almost 18 acres of boulders, and they range from you know, small to 25 feet long. But the cool thing about it is it's almost completely flat, this whole 18 acres of boulders. And cool. um, yeah, it's cool. Apparently there's several others in the Appalachians, but this is the largest by far. And it's a, it's a national natural monument. Mm. And I think it was created like 20,000 years ago by Glacier, I read. But anyway, oh, interesting. I, I thought it was pretty cool. Just kind of rode up on it. I wanted to go walk around on it, but I had cycling shoes on and it's with the metal clips on the shoes. It was like, I'd have busted my tailbone for sure. So. <laughs> That's not good. We don't want that. We don't want that. So after we got back from the bike ride, we actually went for a hike on Shadow of Death. No. No? Is it Shadow of Death or Shades of Death? Shades of Death. Oh, Shades of Death Trail. Shades. Either way, there was death involved. <laughs> There's a death and a shadow in this hike. <laughs> no one died, but there was shadows. <laughs> It was a great hike. It was only like a two mile round trip, but I mean, it was pretty, you know, rocky and and technical, but. Well, you can check it out. Oh yeah, you can just watch it. Yeah. Coffee and stones, good spot. Yeah. So today, so last night we ended up here, and this is a harvest host. It's in Pennsylvania, and it is the Pioneer Tunnel Coal Mine and Steam Train. So what do you think we're doing today? We're going into the Pioneer Tunnel Coal Mine and then hopping on the steam train. was in production, the company employed 35 men, 10 mules, and a handful of young boys. And with a workforce such as that, 
they were responsible for getting out of here 400 tons of coal out of here each day. But in 1931, the mine was forced to close down due to the Great Depression, but reopening, reopening it in 1962 as a tourist attraction. This is the largest vein of anthracite coal in the world. And in this section of the mine, the width begins right here, right by this rock formation, which is known as the bottom rock. And all that shiny stuff right there that I'm shining my light at, that is all anthracite coal. And it stretches all the way down there to a little bit past the mine motor to about where my light ends. And it does travel east to west for 40 miles in each direction from this location. So it does run a total of 80 miles altogether. And within those 80 miles, it can get up to around 200 feet thick, which is rare for an anthracite coal vein. If you take a look right here, you can see that we do have a petrified tree. And what a petrified tree is, it's just a tree turning into a rock or into coal. But the reason why this tree did not turn into coal, it is because it is far too large. What coal is, it's mostly smaller vegetation like ferns, grass, things you'd find in a swamp or marsh. And if you take a look right here, you can see an imprint of this smaller vegetation. This is a fossil. What a fossil is, is a remains or an imprint. In this case, it is an imprint. How it was formed, was vegetation was captured, pressed against a rock formation. While the rock formation is being formed, the vegetation turned into coal, and all that's been all mined out of here. And this is the imprint of the vegetation. Now, right here, we have a four-ton cart. And this is the average cart you would find in this mine. If this cart was empty, we would have rails underneath our feet, and we would roll it underneath a chute. And if you take a look behind our miner sitting here, you can see that we do have a chute. And you can see all the coal flowing out of the chute and into the cart. And if you look behind the cart, you notice there is a man standing behind there. That man is helping to control the flow of coal. How he's doing that is that there's a small door there that he's lifting, allowing the coal to flow through. And if you look here, see the man sitting here. Look like he is on a break, but he is not. He has a job. If you notice, he has his feet up on the cart. The reason why he has his feet up on the cart is because he is measuring the amount of coal. The reason why you need to use your feet is when you are mining down here, it is like this down here. Oh. And this is the only light that you have on in the mine when you are mining. And this is very similar to what it would look like during the 18 and 1900s. They use lamps known as carbide lamps that did give off about the same amount of lighting that my lamp does. But the only place in the mine that had any lighting in it was the stables in the foreman's office. None of this lighting would be in here, and that's even true today. And one of the reasons why is it because of the gases that are released when you are mining. If you take a look here, this is a map of where we came in. You can see all the veins that we passed through. And you can see the mammoth vein. And you can see how the continental drift took the horizontal formations of coal and turned them vertical. And if you look up here, you notice that there is some coal exposed to the surface. The coal exposed to the surface is known as outcrop, and that's how it was discovered in this area, from the surface, from the outcropping. So cool. It was a very bumpy ride, especially down into the mine. I actually have a headache. Just my neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you've been on one of those. Remember that old wooden roller coaster in, was it the New York, New York? In Vegas. Just by that time you're done, you have a. Yanks you around. <laughs> kind of oh my gosh, you have whiplash. It wasn't that bad, but it was. It was rough. That... Well, the, the carts were the original uh, mine carts from the 30s, so. Yeah. It's crazy. We learned a lot. Yeah, it's hard to explain everything, but the, the whole history of this area and how these mines operated, and I mean, the fact that they had nine and ten year old boys, yeah, you know, doing the most dangerous job in the mine, which was when the mine carts were coming out, they had, I can't remember what they called them, but there was this wooden stick, and they would, because they were fast, they could run up and jam it into the wheels. In the wheel, it was the braking system. But, you know, I felt kind of touristy on the steam train ride, but it's so oh, yeah. cool. I, that's an old, actual. A repurposed steam train yeah so we're steam gonna engine. we're gonna leave you with the steam engine footage so check it out we'll see you uh down the road carry on carry on okay.